Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I've got a table full of air guns in front of me, and in this video we're doing something that a lot of you guys have asked for for a long time, ever since I did the blowgun video. This is going to be, uh, I would say a quick introduction, but it will probably not be very quick. A little bit of an introduction to air guns and air gunning. The way I'm going to go about this is I'm going to tell you guys kind of how I got involved with air guns and maybe tell you some stories to go along with that. The only gun I'm going to talk about specifically today that I do not have on the table is back in Iowa. I don't have it with me. It's the first BB gun I ever owned. I think it's the first one I ever shot. I got it for Christmas when I was eight years old. My dad bought it for me and that got me kicked off loving shooting for the rest of my life until now. That was almost 20 years ago. That BB gun he bought me was the Daisy Grizzly and I think it had a number after that denoting what it was. Um, but that is a single pump pneumatic BB gun. Uh, I believe it shot pellets as well through a single feed tray and I think I'll have an example of a single feed tray a little later on here. But that was my start into planking and shooting. You would cock the bolt handle, pump it one time for each shot, click the safety off and shoot. Really good way for a youngster to learn some fundamentals. When I started shooting that air gun, my dad brought out some of the ones he had to shoot along with me. I actually have one of those on the table here, and this is the case that he always carried it in. You'll notice that it looks very similar to one that I have, and we're going to talk about the differences here. So this is the Crossman 1377 American Classic. This particular model um, was one I believe uh, my dad said he bought when he was in college. It has a slide open top, and this is broken. Uh, there, I was able to get that plunger back. It's got a magnetic tip on the front there to facilitate using BBs. Then you would close that, cock it with this lever back here, pump up to 10 times with this lever, and take the safety off and shoot it. Uh, well, since we have this open, I think we actually can get it to shoot once. Let's see if I can put a single BB in this gun and get it to shoot. Like I said, that uh, bolt is broken there, but it looks like we are going to get it into battery. I'm gonna pump it. Let's go five times. I should probably put a drop of oil right under here, but actually I see that it's got a good amount of oil there already. Uh, so I'm just going to take off the safety here Ah, I do have to cock this one as well. And let me just shoot a uh, soda can over here. The sights look like they have been knocked way askew. So I'm not even sure if I'm going to be anywhere close. Ah, I hit under it. <laughs> so no, they're nowhere close and this bolt popped back open. This broke and I have looked all over the internet trying to find parts to fix this, a new bolt. I may end up trying to get somebody to machine me one out of Delrin at some point, but uh, for now this gun is, is pretty much inoperable. I was glad I was able to get that bolt out of there and get it to fire once. The other air gun um, that was always laying around the house was my grandfather's and this is one that dad had in his main gun cabinet for most of my childhood and he never pulled it out i found it one day while i was looking through there when i was still pretty young i thought it was a german luger i didn't know anything about it turns out this is a daisy co2 200 this is a co2 powered pellet pistol uh, the CO2 cartridge would go right inside this grip here, and I believe it was a five-shot repeater. BBs load through the back right here, and then you would press this lever forward, shake it, flip it over, and actually I think it loaded a BB in there, and then you could pull the trigger five times before you had to reload the little internal magazine by flipping it over, shaking it, and all that. 
As soon as I realized that this was indeed a BB gun, I got some CO2 cartridges and tried it out. It leaks way too bad to actually shoot it. And that's a shame. Uh, you can get maybe three or four shots out of it, but uh, it, it leaks like crazy. You got gas blowing out of the grip and all that. It does have an extremely comfortable ergonomic grip and it does have that very steep grip angle, uh, but it would have been really cool as a, a plinking BB pistol. Uh, but I was never able to get this working. I tried oiling it. I tried pulling it apart and looking at seals. At some point, I would love to get this BB gun restored. I would love to send it off to somebody who knows what they're doing with old CO2 air guns to rebuild the internals and get this working again. Because this, uh, like I said, this BB gun has been in the family for a long time. I'm not exactly sure how old it is. I'll probably uh, do some more digging on that at some point. But anyway, I would like to get this gun shooting again. I mentioned that that was my grandpa's. He did also have a couple of other BB guns and pellet guns that he purchased later on to shoot pigeons out of his barns with. At one point, he had a lot of his farm implements stored in uh, old open front barns and the pigeons would just fill the cupolas up top and take a crap on everything in there. So he would go in and I believe he had a Crossman, I want to say it was a Crossman 7600 and I could be wrong on that. I may have to look it up and put it up in here, but it was a seven or eight pump multi-pump BB gun. Uh, and I believe you could single load that one with pellets as well, though I could be wrong about that. Anyway, uh, that gun is one that he took out hunting for pigeons with, and he handed me a daisy buck. And I don't know how long this daisy buck had been around, uh, but it looked older at the time. I was probably between 10 and 12 years old at this time. And if you guys know anything about the daisy buck, you know that it does not have anywhere near the power uh, to kill a pigeon and probably not even the accuracy to hit it. And I think he knew that at the time. He just wanted me to go out hunting these pigeons with him. And that was one of the things that got me hooked on hunting. Eventually he sent me out on my own with that Crossman 7600 and I was able to get a bunch of pigeons with that. Round about that time, I decided I needed to get a decently powerful BB and pellet gun of my own to go squirrel hunting with. I wanted to be able to hunt for meat and be able to shoot around and plink, so I bought this Daisy Powerline 880. And yes, that's what's marked on top. I think most of them are marked 880S now, not sure why. This gun is still made. You can still pick these up. Uh, I believe I paid about $40 for this when I was probably 12 to 14, somewhere in there. As this came in the box, the stock was loose and almost broken off. I've got it epoxied in place. I did that when I was a teenager as well. It's still loose now, the epoxy is cracked, but the thing still shoots. Let's uh, plink around with this a little bit. I've got it loaded with BBs right now. It does have a loading port on this side that you can put BBs in. And it also has a single shot pellet tray. Uh, and you can use both simultaneously. The internal BB compartment holds a bunch of BBs. And when you pull back the cocking lever on the side, it drops a BB in and you can probably see it in there and attaches to a magnet similar to that first uh, BB and pellet pistol that I showed you. So we'll close the bolt. It does have a safety on it. The safety on this always moved so hard that I never bothered to use it. <laughs> uh, and this can be pumped between one and 10 times. This has an extremely long pump lever. And this gun is very, very easy to pump. And I've lost track here, but we're just plinking anyway. Let me take a shot at this can over here. Easily zip right through that can. I believe this thing will shoot somewhere around 600 feet per second. Uh, it is certainly not fast. And in fact, I'll probably put it over the chronograph sometime just out of curiosity. But this gun 
ended up being the first one that I took out into the woods to hunt squirrel with. And this was also the first air gun that I got a headshot on a squirrel with and killed pretty much instantly. I was super excited about that at the time and ended up loving this thing ever since. Even though it is built very cheaply, mostly out of plastic, and there's a real upside to that, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. For now, since we're talking about this particular air gun, I'm gonna move aside some of these other air rifles here, and we're actually gonna take uh, a five shot group with this and see how it does. I've got a target set out at 25 yards and we'll put some on the paper and see what happens. Normally I would not take a shot on a squirrel with this thing past 10 to 15 yards, but if I remember right, it's accurate enough we should be able to get them on paper pretty well at 25 here. So let me throw up my shooting rest to let the gun shine as much as it can. Somebody was irritated on a comment about me saying gun over and over and over. Well, that's what it is. I'm probably gonna call it a gun, air gun, whatever. I'm not gonna keep switching. Yeah, anyway. All right, we're lined up pretty well there. The pellets that I'm shooting today are the 7.9 grain Crossman Premier hollow points. This, these, are about the best economical ammo that you can get for um, pellet guns. I used to shoot quite a few of these daisy pellets and I don't even think they come in these little boxes anymore. This particular one has belt loops <laughs> uh, or, or belt clips for walking through the woods. I don't, like I said, I don't even think these are made anymore. I just keep this container around because it's kind of uh, kind of cool. Any of the daisy pellets, to my knowledge, are still made uh, horribly, uh, absolutely terribly. These Crossburn Premier pellets that you can find usually at Walmart for six to seven dollars for a 510 shoot way better than anything else uh, that you're gonna find in the uh, box stores like that. All right, so let me take a group here. I'm being careful not to pull this bolt back far enough to pick up a BB because that head is magnetic and it's going to try to pull one in. I just pulled it back far enough to cock it and then I'll use this ramp right here on the side to roll in a pellet and push it forward. I'm going to pump up to 10 times uh, on each of these shots during this accuracy test. I'm gonna try not to be putting too much force on the stock because again, this thing is broken and wiggles all around. The trigger on this is super long and creepy, but I have shot this thing so long that I'm used to it. I think that was three shots. We'll shoot two more. With all of these air guns that shoot both BBs and pellets, the pellets are always gonna shoot more accurately. Um, I probably would spray them pretty much all over that target if I was shooting BBs. In fact, maybe we'll test that out. All right, this should be five. All right, let's go run up there and uh, see what kind of damage we did. All right, not gonna have grease rings like we normally do to be able to see this, at least not very good ones, but I was aiming at this target and you can see we're just a little bit off, but I shot about an inch and a half group there. Open sights at 25 yards. I'm not complaining about that at all. Just for comparison's sake, let me uh, shoot that same gun with BBs and we'll see if it does anything similar. So this time, instead of loading pellets in, I'll cap that, tip it upright, pull it back, and it picked up a BB, and we'll shoot the group again. Oh, my stock completely fell off. <laughs> Gonna have to come up with a better solution to put this thing back together, because it is uh, kind of a nostalgic piece for me. 
I'll probably just end up filling it up with glue again. All right, there it's back in, together enough that we can shoot this group. All right, let's go up there and see what the BBs did. Actually, not too shabby with the BBs. Uh, I see, ah, there's the fifth one. So we've got about a two and a half inch group. So as I was saying, um, the on these types of air guns, pellets, the vast majority of the time uh, shoot more accurately. So that is the Daisy Powerline 880. And I've had a lot of fun with this thing. It has been a good, really inexpensive uh, little planking air gun. These usually come with a little uh, cheap Chinesium scope on the top of them. My advice to anybody who buys one of these is to throw that thing away, don't even waste your time with it, and just shoot it with the open sights. The open sights on here are actually pretty decent. You got a notch rear, which is adjustable for windage and elevation, and a bright red fiber optic front sight with a nice long tube. Shoot this thing iron sights, or if you insist on putting a scope on it, you can, uh, it does have a dovetail molded into the plastic receiver here. But again, this gun is at max a 25 yard plinking gun. Hunting with it, I would probably max out at 15 yards. There's no, you don't need a scope anyway. Uh, the iron sights will do just fine. I shot that Daisy pellet gun for a while, and then I decided, as does happen, that I needed some more power. That was right around the time where Gammo air guns were starting to become really popular. They had come out with uh, the Whisper, I think, which was something like $250 to $300 at the time. And maybe they were doing like the Hunter Extreme or something that they were boasting about 1,600 feet per second with PBA pellets, which were their super uh, lightweight, super cruddy little pellets and shooting hogs with them and crazy stuff like that. Anyway, <laughs> this was one of their older, cheaper models at that time. And this is the Hunter 220 model. And I think I paid something like $130 for this, which was a lot of money to a teenager. And it also came with a scope on top. I'm pretty sure the scope on it was crappy as well. I did use it for, I don't remember what scope it was, and I may have put a better one on it. I, again, I really don't remember. But I shot this thing for a long time. This is a spring piston air gun, and there is actually a physical metal coil spring in here. Uh, when you break the barrel down, so you gra actually grab onto the barrel and pull it down, it compresses the spring, which locks in place, and you can see the barrel kind of free floats now and you put a pellet right in there. This air gun is in 177 caliber, um, the same as all of the other air guns that we've shot so far. So we're gonna use these same Crossburn Premier hollow point pellets to shoot it. This particular type of air gun is very hard to shoot accurately. And here's why. You might be able to see when I shoot this, the recoil is weird on these spring piston air guns. They are way louder than you think they would be, especially with your cheek on the stock, because the thing vibrates like crazy when you shoot it because of that big old thick spring shooting to the front. <clears throat> the thing actually recoils more forwards than backwards because of how that spring jumps. Because of that, you can't just plop it down on a rest and take your shot. When I was really into air guns, I did a lot of reading on the Pyramid Air Gun blog, and I think that's where I bought this air gun and actually most of the air guns that I purchased I bought from Pyramid Air. But the main writer on that blog is a guy by the name of Tom Gaylord, and he is known as kind of the father of modern air gunning. He, I'm not sure if he still writes over there. He was getting to be fairly old when I was reading his stuff back then. Him and his wife would both write on that blog. But he kind of pioneered, or at least wrote a lot about, what's known as the artillery hold. Basically, the idea of the artillery hold was that 
you hold the gun as loosely as possible without squeezing it into your shoulder, without gripping it. Kind of put two fingers like this under the fore end of the stock, making sure it's in the same place every time. Uh, that's a harmonics issue. And pulling the trigger straight back with the sights aligned and letting the gun fire. That's the method I'm gonna use for this. I am gonna place my hand on the rest and the gun on my hand and try to shoot it like that. I do not know if these sights are anywhere near aligned for shooting at 25 yards. You can see this rear sight is jacked way up in the air. I think that's how I had to have it to shoot at 10 yards. Uh, again, I don't know if that's how it needs to be or not. We're gonna see. I'm gonna take a few shots on paper there at 25 yards and see how this does. This does have a traditional rifled barrel as I think all of these guns do. I'll close that up, make sure it's all the way at the top. The safety on this in the front of the trigger guard, it is a blade style. Uh, so we'll flick that forward. Some air guns uh, of this era and, and maybe some still do today, I, I, I'm not for sure. When you cock the gun by breaking the barrel open, the safety automatically goes on. This gun does not have that. I didn't want that, especially for while hunting, but I did get in the habit while shooting this to as soon as I fire, flipping that safety right back on because it is in the trigger guard. It is very easy to get to. All right, let's shoot a five shot group with this and see if it does any good whatsoever. I, I'm not actually expecting it to do as well as that uh, daisy we just shot, even though this is a much better construction. And you see how loud and buzzy that thing is. I'm gonna go take a quick look at the target and see if I'm even anywhere on paper. That was on paper and actually on the target circle that I was shooting at. So we'll go ahead and shoot a five shot group and then we'll go down there and I'll show it to you. <clears throat> the trigger on this air gun is probably one of the worst I have ever shot. I would compare it to a slightly lighter version of the Mosin Nagant trigger. It is long, in fact here I'll shoot it over in the dirt and kind of show you. It is long and creepy as all get out. There's, there's where you hit the wall, it is a two-stage trigger. Hit the wall and then creep, 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 and it goes off. It's gotten better than it was since I first bought it. There was all kinds of grit in it then. <clears throat> all right, let me finish out this group here. This trigger also has a ton of over travel, which makes follow through really hard and follow through on a spring piston air gun is pretty important. I think that was five shots. Let's go take a look at the target. Uh, and as I thought, that was a little bit worse. Again, that could be my shooting. I'm way out of practice, but we've got one shot there on the bullseye, three up here and one over there. We're on the target, open sights with an old type spring piston air gun. I'm decently happy with that for now. I'm gonna jump just a little bit out of the order that I bought these guns in uh, because the next gun is so similar to the one we just shot that it would be remiss of me not to put them more or less side by side to compare them. So this is actually one of my most recent air gun purchases. This is also a Gammo. I believe this is the Hornet Maxim. Um, and of course they've got a million different names for very, very similar air guns. This particular model uh, is before they really started getting into putting the magazine on it. They did not include any sort of iron sights on it. And this air gun is braked and shrouded. It is significantly quieter than that previous gun. And it's for several reasons. One, this does have their whisper system uh, barrel shrouding but it also has a compressed gas piston instead of an actual spring. You'll notice that the tone of this gun is drastically different than the last one, and it is for the better. This pellet gun right here, I think, represents an air gun that just about everybody that wanted to have an air gun in their house but didn't want to pay a lot of money, this represents kind of the category they should be looking in. I believe I bought this pellet gun about four years ago. 
And at the time, I think I paid $179 for it. And for that, I think it's absolutely worth it. I will mention that on this pellet gun and on the other one with the scope that I'm going to show you, the optics I have on it are absolute garbage. This particular one is a UTG AccuShot uh, or something like that. It is 3 to 12 by 44. It's got a mil dot reticle and it's got an illuminated reticle as well with like 36 different colors you can put on it. Anyway, it holds zero decently. It doesn't track worth a crap, but it holds zero well enough that I have left it on the gun because it's not uh, on my priority list of things to buy. Anyway, this was about a, an $80, 80 to $100 scope if I remember right, and I, I would not recommend buying something in that price range. This is vastly improved from that Hunter 220 model that I just showed you. There is probably a at least a 10 year gap uh, between when the two of them were introduced. They are both um, Gamo, as I think I mentioned, which is a Spanish company. You still have the same style of safety here. The trigger, however, is vastly improved. It is light, crisp, it does have some over travel, but that's okay. that is uh, a lot more acceptable. And overall, the thing is lighter. If I did not have a big old chunky scope on here, this thing would be a lot lighter than that uh, spring piston one. This is the first one I'm going to show you that I actually expect to get halfway decent groups out of. This is a uh, 22 caliber. I did buy this pellet gun specifically for my wife to hunt squirrels with when we lived in town and had just a couple of little spots right outside of town that we could go uh, and squirrel hunt at. So that is what I bought for her at the time. It did end up being a little heavier than she would like with that scope on it. Again, I should have gone a much different, different route on that, but it works out pretty well. Let's take a five shot group with this and see what kind of accuracy we can get at 25 yards. It is going to be a little less picky about the hold. However, I am going to still use the artillery hold because again it does have a piston that will slam forward and make the recoil a little weird it does feel much different compressing it again because you're compressing gas instead of a spring if you guys are interested in air gun projectiles specifically pellets there's a lot of good videos on youtube talking about that i will mention just a few things briefly here but know that i'm not an expert in this in any way uh, Air Arms Hunting South Africa is probably the number one channel I would suggest for a lot of that. Also, Ted's Holdover uh, channels along that line. Right now, those guys are doing mostly things with slugs, shooting slugs out of air guns. But go back and watch some of their older videos, and they've got a lot of good things talking about pellet science. And in fact, I think uh, on the Air Gunning 101, I think is the, the name of the series that Air Arms Hunting South Africa put out. He's got some really good in-depth uh, scientific discussion of pellets and how they work. So just know that this is just an introduction video and should not be taken as anything comprehensive. A couple of the things that I will mention about pellets is they are designed to slow down very quickly. They have a skirt in the back that is fairly thin and designed specifically to, when they get hit with that blast of air, they're designed specifically to, for the skirt to spread out and make contact with the rifling. So it obturates to the bore similar to a lead bullet and creates the seal going down. That's that and the fact that they are soft lead is one of the reasons that you can push the pellet directly into the rifling. I'm going to pull out uh, a tin of 22 caliber crossbow mirrors here. These are 14.3 grains. But you might be able to see the rifling actually starts right there, and I'm going to press the pellet directly into that rifling. You do want to make sure that that pellet is completely flush before you close it, because Otherwise, it will pinch off the back of that skirt when you close and you won't get uh, near the accuracy that you could. This type of spring piston air rifle, unlike the metal spring one, can be left cocked for long periods of time without damaging it. 
So that's another upside of the gas piston. Let me go ahead and shoot a five shot group down there and then we'll go take a look at it. You can see I'm using kind of a chin weld because this scope is way up in the air. Again, a much lighter trigger. It is a little bit creepy and has over travel, but it is much better than the older ones. Again, you can see I clicked on that safety just out of habit. All right, let's go take a look at that. So not a great group there, but I put all five shots in about an inch and a half. Um, that's something like six MOA, which is not great at all, but I would be comfortable hunting with this particular gun to 20 or 25 yards uh, with this level of accuracy. You can pretty much know that you're going to hit a squirrel uh, in a vital area at that range. While I have this gun out, I am gonna try one more type of pellets to see if it does any better. I haven't done any testing with this gun for a long time, so this is uh, kind of new again to me. Uh, these are the JSB Match Diablo, and no, I'm not saying Diablo. As somebody pointed out to me in a comment, it's Diabolo, um, but you get the idea. Uh, this is the Diablo Exact uh, pellet from JSB considered to be one of the better pellets that you can buy and tends to shoot well in a wide variety of air guns. This does have a little bit thinner skirt, a little bit different design. I believe this is, I don't remember what grain weight these are. I think they're about the same, 1.030 grams. I think it comes out to something like 15 grains. We'll shoot these and see how they do. I'm also warmed up now and using the artillery hold a little more effectively and consistently. Let's go take a look at that and see if it's any better. And it looks like that one's about the same. We've got two or three of them right here around the bullseye and then two down here. Uh, that might be where there's three. It's hard to tell with pellets. But uh, anyway, that shrunk it down to maybe just over an inch. And that approximately one inch group is pretty much what I have come to expect with this particular pellet gun. Not great by any means. Pellet guns are capable of a lot more, but it is significantly better than anything else I've showed you uh, so far. Now we're gonna jump back into the order in which I purchased guns. This is a Benjamin Discovery, and this is the first pre-charged pneumatic air gun uh, that I purchased, and it's in fact, the, it's the only one that I have. <clears throat> this was the only semi-affordable pre-charged pneumatic air gun at the time I bought this, which again, uh, 10 or 11 years ago. I have since added this uh, TX-22 muzzle brake on the end here. It's not a brake, it's actually an air gun silencer uh, is what it is. Of course, perfectly legal because it is not, nor can it be attached to a firearm, but it does uh, quiet the little pop of air quite a bit that comes out of the muzzle. This gun is charged from the end here with a hand pump. Uh, you can also charge it from a scuba tank, but the hand pump is all I've ever had. This particular PCP air gun has the advantage that its fill pressure is 2000 PSI. A lot of other air guns have a fill pressure of 3000 or even 3500 PSI, which is a lot more difficult with a hand pump. This gun was actually designed to be used with a hand pump. And it did come with one when I purchased it. I believe the gun and the hand pump together were around $400, so uh, not cheap. You can get them a lot cheaper now, by the way. The, what you get with something like this is the ability to shoot so much more accurately. The trigger is also not any good on this. It, you can get used to it, but you can shoot it directly off a of rest because there is no spring jumping around. And the major advantage of this is you, you do not have to pump it with air and you don't have to cock a big heavy spring every time you shoot it. 
we're going to start with the uh, Crossman premieres again <clears throat> and shoot a group down there. All you have to do after charging this with air, and we can talk about that in another video if you guys are interested in it at all. There's a thousand other videos on YouTube about it, so I'm not going to belabor the point right now. But all you need to do to shoot it <clears throat> once it's filled with air is cock the bolt, drop in the pellet, close it, and you're ready to go. So let's take a five shot group here. Again, I w let me mention the scope on here really quickly. This is a piece of junk. I am very glad that it is holding zero well enough to shoot. This air gun, I will be putting a better scope on at some point. I just, it hasn't come to the top of the priority list yet. We'll shoot this one probably with two different pellets as well. You can see it has a much different sound to it. A lot of the ping that you hear is actually the hammer hitting the valve. All right, let's go take a look at that group. And I think we can all agree that that is significantly better. Let me close this whole hole of the ripping paper here so you can see the group. We've got about a half inch group there at 25 yards. And that is pretty typical of what this gun can do. As with the last gun, I'm gonna shoot this one with a second type of pellet as well, just to see what happens. Um, this gun I am much more familiar with how it shoots with different pellets. I'm not going to be shooting this uh, regular Diablo Exact pellet. I'm going to be shooting the Jumbo Heavy version. Uh, this is 18.13 grains. This one does have grains actually listed on the package here. Um, and this gun has typically liked this pellet better than the regular uh, Diablo Exact. This one does, though... Uh, print significantly lower on the target, which is why this isn't the one that I always shoot. This pellet is also two to two and a half times the cost of the Crossman Premier pellet. Uh, you can usually get these for something like 20 to $25 per 500 pellet tin, as opposed to between seven and $10 for the Crossman Premiers. I am running a tad low on air, but I should have enough to make one very decent five-shot group here. We'll take a look at that one. Not sure what went on with that one. We had uh, quite a bit of vertical stringing and not the... Uh, lower point of impact that I remember, but oh well. So that's the Benjamin Discovery. This is the pellet gun that got me super interested in tinkering around with air guns to find the best pellet match for it, uh, to find pellet drop. Um, this thing is just a couple inches lower at 50 yards. I have shot squirrels out to 50 yards with this pellet gun. It is accurate enough to do that. Uh, let me pull out some of the other pellets I've tested here. I've got the H&N Field Target Pellets, the uh, RWS Superdomes, which always shot the absolute worst for me in this gun, even though I know they're good quality pellets and uh, shoot well in some guns. Let's see, the H&N Crow Magnums, which are 18.2 grains. These are pretty big and actually expand pretty uh pretty violently in ballistics gelatin. Those are kind of cool, but they didn't shoot very accurate, accurately for me at all. I think I uh, was getting about inch and a half groups typically with this at 25 yards, which as you can see for this gun is not normal. And I think that's about all I have um, to talk about with the Benjamin Discovery. The next pellet gun I bought, that would be the Crossman American Classic. I think they dropped the 1377 model number. I'm not sure about that. Uh, this one has a few changes. We do have a brass bolt handle and cocking action very similar to that ben Benjamin Discovery. It lost the rotating sleeve cover of this one and it also dropped the cocking knob in the back. You can see the cocking knob here on this one and it's absent on this one. Uh, this cocks with the 
volt knob, just like the Benjamin Discovery does. Uh, and it's got a very similar plunger. This one is in 177 caliber. You can also get the model 1322, which comes in 22 caliber, but that one shoots so slow, I'm really not sure why you would buy that over the 1377, unless you had a bunch of 22 caliber pellets. Anyway, this is actually a fairly decent and accurate pellet pistol for the price. I believe you can still get this for around $50. It used to be, I think, $35. I think I paid between $35 and $40 for this one. But it is actually a pretty accurate pellet pistol. With open sights, I have gotten groups as small as a quarter of an inch, pretty much all through the same hole, at 10 yards. Uh, this is a 10-shot, or a 10-pump pneumatic pellet gun. You can pump this up to 10 times, um, and of course, anywhere in between there. I think it takes two pumps to get the pellet out the barrel. I'm gonna replace that target and I'm actually gonna shoot this at 25 yards as well off of the rest. When I bought this, let me uh, get the air out of it for now. When I bought this, I also bought the carbine stock that you can get for it. I don't remember how much this is, but it's very simple to switch. You've got a grip screw on either side and you slide this right onto the frame and you've got a little uh, carbine. This has been around for a long time and you can actually, you can put it on this older version as well. The rear sight on here, you've got a, a notch, but you can also completely reverse this and it's got an aperture sight in the back, which uh, was useful when these front sights were made decently. As I might be able to show you in a second, the front sight on this particular version is flexible all over the place and has never been straight. But again, I have shot very small groups with this particular pellet pistol. <clears throat> so I won't be using this today just because I don't want to switch things out and then take it apart just to put it back away. Because the front sight is so rough and not uh, very easy to use, I am gonna throw up this shoot and see target so I can see it better from this far. All right, so back to pumping uh, incessantly. Let me get all of these 22 caliber pellets off the table. And we'll shoot with these uh, Crossburn Premier 7.9 grain pellets. This is the only pellet I have in 177 caliber. Otherwise, I would probably try out others as well. Uh, one of the upsides about this particular model, it has a very, very good trigger. And this one I've actually adjusted to be very light. Uh, I think it probably breaks somewhere around two pounds. Uh, and you can do that just by adjusting the spring that's inside. It doesn't have an adjustment per se, but you can squish down the spring inside and make this trigger super light. So I am gonna put on the safety <laughs> while I pump this. This trigger can be adjusted so light that you need to pump it before you cock the bolt, otherwise pumping it will actually drop the sear and set it off. Uh, I don't have adjusted quite that light. <clears throat> Let me see if I can rig up some sort of rest here. And uh, I'll shoot this thing at 25 yards. I may not be very well on paper, uh, but we'll find out. I have not shot this thing at paper targets in a long time. It normally just gets used to plank. I believe that's on the target, so we'll keep going with it. Let's go take a look. So you can see that the sights are not quite on, but that is the group at 25 yards with open sights. I believe that one is in the group as well. So it's eh, probably two and a half to three inches there, but for a pellet pistol, that's not bad at all. So if you are looking for a pump-up pellet pistol and you don't mind a few things being a little cheesy, but you need some accuracy, I would absolutely suggest one of these. Uh, I think you can do some upgrades for these. I think you can buy a custom uh, steel receiver for the top. Um, most of this gun is metal, but ironically the, this receiver part is not. It is plastic. But it is actually a decent pellet pistol with a really good barrel. <clears throat> and again, I think you can still get these for under 50 bucks. Let me check Amazon. Uh, looks like 60 bucks is what these are going for right now. 
and they do have a, uh, a different style pump handle now. 60 bucks, I think, is still a good price for uh, this particular air gun. If it is as good a quality as this one, as you saw between this pistol and this pistol, there are some uh, significant quality uh, decreases. There's only one more air gun that I have here to show you guys, and it is just for fun. This is the Crossman C11 or C10, I think this is. It just says Phantom on the side. I don't actually see a model number anywhere on it. Nope. Uh, but this is a CO2 BB repeater pistol. This is semi-automatic, and it is purely for fun and plinking. This one has... Uh, you saw a BB roll out the end of the barrel there. Uh, this one is powered by a single CO2 cartridge and has a... I actually don't remember how many BBs this holds, but let's go ahead and swap the uh, CO2 cartridge and we'll do some plinking with it here. Uh, so you'll unscrew this little thing here. Pop the empty cartridge out and put a drop of oil on the top of the CO2 cartridge here. This is Crossman Pellgun oil, and pretty much the standard in all CO2 air guns. You just need a little bit of a drop there to keep the, so the seals moist. Uh, you can use this on the seals of the multi-pump air guns as well, and I do. I've bought several tubes of this. It does tend to leak. I wish they could come up with a better little bottle design, but hey. All right, so I'll stick that in the grip here. And of course, I've got this pointed in a safe direction because if there's a BB in the barrel, it can shoot it out when this happens. So I'll get it to firm, then tighten this. And it actually isn't hissing too much. Might be able to hear it just a little bit. All right, you can hear that hissing. Uh, this one isn't sealing too good. I will. Doesn't seem to be working. Does the magazine have to be in? That's interesting. I've never had that happen before. There we go. Not sure what was wrong with it. <laughs> I thought it was broken altogether. All right, it is leaking a little bit here, and that's with the screw tightened all the way down. That is one of the downsides to... It's sealed up a little bit, but you can still hear it leaking there. Anyway, that's one of the downsides to uh, cartridge, CO2 cartridge guns. I don't think I mentioned it when talking about the Benjamin Discovery, but it can also take CO2. <clears throat> let me show you real quick here. Uh, they sell a little tool you thread in the back here, degas it, let out all the air, and then you can actually fill it with CO2 uh, through this port. You do get a lot less velocity when you do that, but I think you can get something like 100 shots at five or 600 feet per second. So if you want to plank with it and not fill it up for a long time, uh, that might be pretty cool. And then of course you do have to degas it completely of CO2 before putting, uh, before putting compressed air back in. So, I'll go ahead and shoot this little thing while I've got it here. Something's not quite right. I can't seem to get this script thing on. I, I bought this <clears throat> specifically for, for planking at targets indoors with a homemade BB trap. And I was, if I remember right, it was a particularly cold winter. I didn't want to go outside, but I wanted to shoot, so I bought this thing, made a BB trap out of cardboard boxes and magazines and newspapers and that sort of thing, and uh, shot this in the basement. All right, so you fill it up with BBs, uh, and I, th I don't know if I said it or not, I think this was like $30 or something like that. Not very expensive at all, but you just slap the magazine in, and I've got a, a soda can sitting down there. There we go. And this thing's accurate to about minute of soda can at 10 yards. I do have a steel plate down there at 25. Let me see if I can hit it. Oh, and I am now running out of CO2 because uh, this cartridge was leaking so much. 
Oh, there, I hit the steel plate. <clears throat> I don't know if you could hear that or not, but it's just barely lobbing them out now. <laughs> I'm having to hold over at 10 yards. And it's just kind of spraying them everywhere. Anyway, that's just kind of a fun little plinker and not really uh, all that much related to any of the rest of the guns I have here. So that is a long-winded overview of my air guns and how I got into shooting air guns. You guys that watch the channel know I'm a big firearms guy. I love messing around with them, tinkering, shooting them. I am mostly into firearms, but I do think everybody should have a good air gun at home. Um, whether you just want to use it for plinking in practice or hunting or survival type things, everybody should have a good air gun. And when I say good air gun, I mean, if, if you're talking about a, a pellet pistol, maybe something like this, but this is kind of on the, on the low end of what you should probably have. At the minimum, I think everybody should have a gas piston brake barrel air gun. These are super affordable. You can even now get the 10 shot magazine version of these, which I've actually heard good things about, for around $200. These are, in my mind, the perfect prepper gun. You can leave these sitting in a corner for years, never shooting them, uh, then pull them out, grab you a tin of pellets, and go to town. This is more than capable of hunting for squirrels, rabbits, and other small game at fairly short distances. If you needed to, you could, you could probably even kill bigger game with this at super close distances with the right shot placement. So I do think the spring piston air gun is a legitimately good prepper option. And if you are buying it for that reason, I would suggest 22 caliber. You can pretty easily find 22 caliber pellets, and it does have a little bit more of a thump than the uh, 177. If you are willing to spend just a little bit more money and don't want to go with a spring piston air gun, there are several options on the market right now for entry-level pre-charged pneumatic air guns. Most, I even saw an option for under $200 when I was scrolling through the pair the Pyramid Air website just a little bit ago. Would I suggest that? Probably not. I would suggest starting out with something like the uh, Benjamin Maximus or something like that if you're not wanting to spend a whole lot of money. <clears throat> Most of them don't come with a pump, but you can get uh, decent aftermarket ones or you can buy the kits that come with a pump. I would suggest buying an aftermarket pump instead because uh, as happened with mine, uh, the kit pumps are very prone to failure, but you can get into a decent pre-charged pneumatic air gun, some of them even coming with um, repeating magazines now, for that uh, four to five hundred dollar range very easily. Besides air guns being super quiet, cheap, effective for small game hunting, and fun to shoot, the reason why they make the perfect prepper gun is ammo availability. Now, during the COVID ammo shortage, there has been a shortage of pellets as well, but they are coming back and you can buy them again, especially these Crossburn Premiers. As I mentioned earlier, these are the best quality inexpensive pellets that I know of. Uh, a tin of 500 of them going for about $6 at my Walmart. You can have a thousand rounds of ammo for $12. Think about that a moment. That's uh, pretty substantial. You can have 10,000 rounds of rounds of ammo for $120. I can't think of any other way you're going to be able to shoot that much for as little. Air guns are the cheapest way you can go to get in a lot of shooting practice. <clears throat> They're also an excellent training tool for teaching new shooters fundamentals of marksmanship uh, without worrying about hearing protection, without worrying about recoil, noise, intimidation, anything like that. The last time I taught a brand new shooter how to shoot, I pulled out this Powerline 880 and taught them how to align sights, how to squeeze the trigger, how to breathe, uh, how to properly shoulder a rifle, 
all of that sort of thing. And they were able to do that and practice fundamentals of marksmanship without any of those other distracting factors. I've just shown you guys today the air guns that I have and told you about the experience that I've had with them. There's a whole lot more out there. I've covered just about all of the different categories of air guns that are currently available. Uh, you've got your multi-pump, CO2, spring piston, and pre-charged pneumatic air guns. But within those categories, especially the pre-charged pneumatics, there is a whole field of things to explore. Do yourselves a favor if you've never really looked into air guns and go to Pyramid Air's website and just scroll through the pre-charged pneumatic pellet gun section of their website and you can see just what kind of variety there is. Even without getting into the, the super fancy Olympic target style air guns, you can drop $3,000 on an air gun. And while that's probably never something I'll do, a lot of people really enjoy it. Again, if you watch Air Arms Hunting South Africa or Ted's Holdover, those guys have a lot of the high end air guns that are capable of absolutely insanely tiny groups matching firearm accuracy at 100 yards and actually hitting with a decent amount of energy, shooting some of the newer types of air gun projectiles uh, that resemble rifle bullets a whole lot more than air gun pellets. So anyway, guys, there's a lot to check out. Um, what do I personally want to do in air guns? Eventually, I would like to have a higher end pre-charged pneumatic air gun. I have looked at the Benjamin Marauder a lot. It's got a lot better trigger. Uh, you can buy a regulated version now. Uh, you can get more shots per fill. Uh, have a lot better barrel, get some better accuracy. Um, that's an option. That's around the $500 mark. What I really would like uh, that I have looked at a lot in the last couple of years is the FX Dreamline. That is a Swedish made air gun kind of the lowest on their pricing tier and it's around i think the cheapest one was with the synthetic stock is around eleven hundred dollars uh, so not cheap but you can get those in up to 25 caliber fx does make air guns up to 35 caliber i believe uh, shooting a big old pellet so anyway guys there are a thousand different directions you can go with air guns and there is no way that i'm even going to scratch the surface of it with this video today. What's coming up for me on this particular channel with air guns? I want to do a lot more squirrel hunting with the Benjamin Discovery. It is, as you saw, more than accurate enough at 25 yards, and it's quiet and effective. Puts them right down with a headshot, even most of the time with a vital shot, and it's a ton of fun to shoot. I don't have a super good way to film squirrel hunting right now because it does involve a lot more moving around as compared to uh, deer hunting, but that is what I plan to do in the future. I hope that was a decent introduction for you guys into the world of air gunning, especially to those of you who have specifically requested I make a video about air guns. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure you are subscribed to the channel with notifications. This video, because I'm not doing any reloading or showing anything gory, I will be able to monetize it, but most of the videos on this channel cannot be monetized because they do have things like that. Because of that, you guys won't regularly see my videos pop up in your recommendations unless you are subscribed to the channel with notifications. So I would really appreciate it if you would do that. Jump over to the Outdoor Generalist Instagram page and you'll see some of my content a little more often than here on YouTube. Again, thanks for watching and y'all have a good one.